Hi, I'm Thorsten Rahn, an authorized Q trainer from Basiscom. Welcome to this learning video based on material taken from the Qt Essentials training course. With these videos, we'll be giving you key insights into Qt as well as demonstrate the type of in depth training available in the classroom based Qt Essentials training course. So let's start with widgets. Widgets are objects which have a visual representation. So, widgets are those controls that the user can use to interact with your application. Qt has a wide range of widgets. There are text widgets, which you can use to read and edit text. There are value-based widgets, which you can use to display values. There are button widgets organizer widgets and item-based widgets. Here you can see a screenshot with several kinds of text widgets. It's basically an example for a messenger kind application with a label on the top that can instantiate it using new queue label and takes the text string and the parent as a parameter. Below you can see a PIX map showing the KDE logo. You can set this PIX map using set PIX map and taking the PIX map as a parameter. Then there's the user login uh, line edit and the password field. Those are Q line edits. Those line edits again get constructed using Q line edit and then taking the parent as a parameter. The text is set using set text and then passing the text as a parameter string. The nice thing about the Q line edit is that you can set the echo mode. In this case, we want a set of asterisks to be seen instead of the letters, so we choose a Q line edit password as an enum. Once the line edit is created, we can now create the connections between the signals and the slots. And in this case, there are two things being offered for the queue line edit. So one example, there's the text changed signal, which offers to emit a signal whenever the text changes. And then there's the editing finished signal, which is emitted whenever the user presses the enter key. Then there's the set input mask and the set validator methods. Both are used to validate uh, the entry of the, that the user has made in the line edit. The one basically through an input mask, uh, which has a fixed number of digits, for example, and the other one through a queue validator uh, object. At the bottom you can see a text field. This text field is being created using Qt text edit. Qt text edit has capabilities to display plain text as well as rich text. Qt text edit is also created on a heap of cores, passing the parent as a parameter. There are basically two options now. Either we create plain text inside it using set plain text with the plain text as a parameter, or we uh, display rich text, and in this case we do it by appending our rich text, which is some HTML-like text with tags, and we append that using the append method with the rich text as a parameter. Like with the queue line edit, we can emit a signal text change or the Qt text edit rather emits a signal text changed, which is uh, emitted whenever the text gets changed. And we can connect the Qt text edit object uh, and its signal uh, with a slot that would act whenever the text would get changed. Next is button widgets. QAbstract button is basically the mother of all button classes. QAbstract button provides all the kind of generic functionality that each button would show. It's the abstract base class of buttons. 
The most popular button class is certainly Q push button. Q push button is uh, created through new Q push button and then we pass the text that is supposed to be displayed on the button and of course we pass the parent as a parameter. To display an icon on the button we are using the set icon method which takes a Q icon uh, object. Uh, in this case it's stored under images uh, slash icon.png so it's in the images subfolder. And then we can connect the click signal of the button with whatever slot has the business logic that is supposed to be triggered. We can create a checkable button by applying the method setCheckable to the button and thereby have a toggle button. In the middle of the screenshot on the right you can see two radio buttons which have the labels option 1 and option 2. Those Q radio buttons can again be created um, by instantiating the Q radio button on the heap, passing the string, the label string that is supposed to be displayed next to it and of course we provide the parent as a parameter as well. At the bottom you can see a single Q checkbox. That Q checkbox also has a label right next to it displaying the text choice one. Again the same procedure. You just create a Q checkbox using new Q checkbox on the heap, pass the string, in this case it's choice one as a parameter and you provide the parent as the last parameter as always. Last but not least, there's Q Button Group, our non-visual button manager, a very special class since it's not really a button, but it's supposed to have buttons grouped together. Um, you can instantiate a Q Button Group as always, as with the other button widgets, and then you perform the add button method which takes the button as a parameter for each button and you can in addition you can set you can um, execute the method set exclusive uh, to make the buttons an exclusive choice. The convenient thing about the button click signal that Q button group offers is that you don't need to connect the signal of each button to the slot in order to listen for, button, for, for the click signal of each button. Instead you can just um, connect the button click signal of the group uh, to the slot which then performs whatever is the business logic of your application in this case. Value widgets. Qt offers several value widgets like QSlider. Q progress bar and Q spin box. You can see them all in the screenshot on the right. All of those classes have a method to set the range, um, a method to set the value, and the progress bar and the spin box even have methods to set the format um, that the text is displayed in, um, which appears right next to the progress bar, and the spin box allows for setting the su suffix that appears inside this, the spin box. In this case you can see that for example on the uh, bottom right in the screenshot there is US dollar chosen as a suffix. The spin box as well as the slider each offer the signal value changed uh, that you can use to connect to a slot that performs uh, the business logic again. Organizer widgets. QGroupBox and QTab widget are organizer widgets. QGroupBox allows to group several widgets together inside a frame. You can even add a title uh, by passing the title string as the first parameter of the new group QGroupBox uh, object. And you can make the title even checkable by performing the set checkable method taking the value true as a boolean. 
And then there is the QTAP widget. The QTAP widget provides tabs. You can uh, add some widget as a tab by executing the method add widget and you can uh, connect the current change signal so that whenever the tab changes um, something will happen and then there's uh, the methods set current widget where you can set the current widget which displays the page associated by the widget. You can also set the tab position by executing set tab position which defines where tabs are drawn. And then there's set tabs closable which adds a close button. Item widgets. Item widgets are used to, uh, to display several items in a row. One example is Cucumber Box, which basically displays kind of a line edit with a drop-down drop menu which has all the items. You can add items to a Cucumber Box by executing the add item method, passing the string of the which is displayed as an item in the uh, menu uh, as the first parameter and the second parameter holds the data that the string refers to. Then you can connect the activated signal of the combo box to your slot um, and this activated uh, signal has an integer as a parameter which is basically the index of the item. Using the, in, the item data method um, that again holds the index as a parameter, you can retrieve the data that is associated with the item. The method setCurrentIndex um, indicates which index is supposed to be displayed currently. QList widget is another item widget. With QList widget you get a list like the one you can see in the screenshot on the bottom right um, and you can again add items to such a list widget using the item method. You can also add items in a different way by creating a queue list widget item object uh, which takes the text associated with the item in the um, list as the first parameter and then uh, you use the list as kind of a parent, this in this case the, the list widget. Then you can even set a uh, state, uh, in this case it's set checked state queued checked which will result in a checkbox that is displayed on the left. Through the method, uh, through by connecting the item activated signal with a slot, we can ensure that whenever the user clicks an item in the list, the slot is going to be executed. And we can associate some data to our queue list widget item by um, executing the set data method uh, with special row and uh, as a second parameter holding the data. And then there are other item widgets, more complex ones, like QTable widget and QTree widget, which you can read all about in our Qt documentation. And last but not least, there are even more widgets, like for example Qt Toolbox, which has a column of tapped widget items, or uh, widgets related to time and date, like QDateEdit, QTimeEdit and QDateTimeEdit. With these widgets, the user can edit date and times. And then there's even a full-blown QCalendar widget, which, has, which basically provides a monthly calendar widget that the user can use to choose a certain day inside the application. Then there's more stuff, like for example the Q Tool button, which allows Q Quick Access button to comments a Q-Splitter and the Q-Stack widget which holds a stack of widgets 
with uh, only one widget visible at a time. We hope you enjoyed the sample of our Acute Essentials training course. For the full experience, including labs, QAs and additional info, we recommend you attend the full multi-day CUTE Essentials training course available from Basiscom or any one of the CUTE training partners. For full details, check out cute.nokia.com. Thanks for watching.